Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math. Today I'll be going over this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week. Um, for the full problem and solution transcript, there will be a link in the description of this video. So the setup for this problem is about rolling dice. So when you roll two dice uh, and you sum them together, you get a distribution that looks like this where 7 is the most likely, because there is the most number of ways to get 7, but 12 and 2 are the least likely, which is something you probably noticed if you played a board game with dice or if you took a probability class. Um, this comes up a lot. Uh, however, this is not the only way you can get this distribution. You can renumber the dice and um, still get this distribution when you sum the dice. So instead of the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbering of a dice, you can number them differently. Uh, so the problem this week was to find the different numbering. Uh, and there were just a couple constraints. So um, as I said before, the sum of the dice have to have the same uh, distribution as this. Um, the faces must all be positive, uh, so greater than 0. And they must have six sides. <coughs> All right, and to tackle this problem, we're going to use uh, generating functions. <clears throat> so the generating function for a dice roll is this, labeled dx. Um, and how generating functions work, or at least how this one works, is the exponent is the outcome of the roll, and the coefficient is the number of ways you can get that outcome. So with a single dice roll, um, all the coefficients are one, because you can only get one outcome for one dice roll. Um, and when, so to generalize this to the sum of two dice, you multiply them together, um, which is dx squared. And hopefully you can see, so the sum of dice two, there's one. Sum of dice of three, there's two ways. Four, there's three ways. So this matches up correctly with this. And so how we're going to find the new numbering of the dice is to factor this huge polynomial into two different polynomials that are not equal to this. Um, and a good place to start is by just factoring dx. So to get started with this, um, the easiest first step is to just factor out the x. All right, and now we have to figure out a way to factor this still large polynomial. Um, and for the sake of time, I'm just going to show that um, x plus 1 is a factor of this. So we'll do some quick um, polynomial long division, which will not take too long. All right, so x to the fourth, we get this, this subtracts good, uh, bring these two down, we use to x squared. Uh, so that works again, and then x plus 1, x plus 1, just 1. So <clears throat> we've successfully factored it a little bit more. Let me just rewrite it for you. All right, and we still have to factor this. Um, and so I'll write it a different way so it seems more intuitive to factor. So we can write this as all right. So oh, my bad. So this you can also write as the um, difference of two squares, and hopefully 
you can see that you can factor this out into the first one plus the second one. And the first one minus the second one. <clears throat> if that's not clear, you can just multiply this out, and <clears throat> you will get this again. So now we have successfully factored dx. All right, so this, this is d of x. And what we can do to get dx squared, which is what we really have to factor, so we can just square all the factors. So, all right, so we've factored dx squared. Now we have to write two other polynomials whose product is dx squared. So let's just say gx and hx. So now we have to start looking at our constraints. Uh, one of the constraints is all faces must have positive values or values greater than 0. Um, so what we do to fix this is we have to give each of these terms um, a factor of x. Um, if that doesn't make sense or is not that intuitive. If you didn't give uh, both of these polynomials a factor of x, then you would end up with a 1, which is x to the 0, which is a means one of the faces has no value. So each one of these has a factor of x in it. Now we just have to split up these factors between the two. Um, and the other constraint that we have to deal with is um, the dice must have six sides. Uh, and so how are we going to do this? So if we look at dx, um, you can notice that the sum of the coefficients, or moreover, d1, which just sums the coefficients, is equal to 6, because a standard dice has six sides. So what we have to do is have g of 1 and h of 1 equal to 6. So we have to split up these factors such that the product of them um, equals 6 for both polynomials. And so a good way to do that is to just evaluate each factor at um, 1. So looking, we have x at 1 is just 1 x plus 1 is 1 plus 1 is 2. x squared plus x plus 1 is 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. And x squared plus, oh, minus x plus 1 is 1 minus 1 plus 1, which is 1. So the only way to get the product of the factors to equal 6 is um, to have a two uh, to have an x plus one and an x squared plus x plus one in both of these. So let's do that. Okay. So we've used all these factors, and now all that's left is this pair of factors. And if we split them up between the two, uh, we would just get the standard numbering on the dice, which is not what we want. So what we're going to do is just we're going to put both of them in, let's say, h. All right. So now if we multiply all this out, which I won't do. I'll just write down the answer for you. Um, we can get the new, <coughs> the new numbering of the dice. So this one is. All right, so going by how the generating functions work, the numbering of this die 
is 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4. And the numbering of this die is 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. And there you go. If you work out all the sums, all the different ways, you will get this distribution. I'll leave that to you for the sake of time. Uh, and that is this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. For more videos like this, you can see our playlist here. Uh, to subscribe to our channel, you can click here. To go to our website, centerofmath.org, you can go here. And if you're on a mobile device, you can click the top right hand of the corner. There's going to be uh, an eye there uh, with all these links.